Tengu. <laughs> the Raven's heir. Soon as one of them's caught, another one takes his place. Hey, Harold, have you read this? Harold? Harold? Harold, you hear me? This is no time for fun and games. And where's Harold? Harold? Well, there's another guard back there unconscious. That's probably him. The Eye of the Sphinx. Where is it? It's there. Oh, good. Then he hasn't got it yet. You mean... the Raven's heir? Shh! Turn it off. He's gonna steal the Eye. But how do you know? Doesn't matter. All that matters is that we catch him. Do you understand? Yeah, but... Do you understand? You and me, mate, we'll be heroes. All right, now, we just have to... What? Halt! Stop! You're under arrest! What's your name, boy? My name is Matthew Miller. And where are you from, Matthew Miller? From Dillsburg, Pennsylvania. But my mom and I live in England now. She's taking care of some rich old lady. We're on our way to Venice at the moment. We're taking a cruise on a big ship. Impressive. You've already seen half the world. I've spent my entire life in Switzerland. Must be really boring. And what's with the gun? What do you need it for? It's the Raven. He was gunned down, so now I need a pistol. Dead birds don't need guns. No do live ones. You don't know who the Raven is, do you? He's the greatest burglar ever. He stole paintings from the Louvre, and those priceless eggs with gold and diamonds and stuff. And Bobby Dobbs says he replaced the crown jewels with rhinestones. I know who the Raven was. Although, I don't quite buy that bit about the crown jewels. 
You do know these days there are thieves far more dangerous than your old raven. Two days ago, a precious ruby was stolen from the British Museum. There was an explosion. A guard was severely injured. Really? Yeah. And do you know what the papers say? <clears throat> you talk too much, Constable. Zelda, monsieur. Anton Jakob Zelda. Or did he pull a gun on you? No, monsieur. Get a move on. Inspector Legrand, it's a great honor to work with a celebrity like you. We appreciate the support of the Swiss police, but... But, monsieur, your journey on this train is most unusual. Is it related to the burglary at the British Museum? Not in the least. And the safe? What's that for? I'll let you know if we need your help, Constable. If you'll excuse me, I'll be in the first freight car at the back of the train for the rest of the trip. I'm not here to enjoy the beautiful scenery. I... I am a good observer, and I have finely honed powers of deduction. Thanks to that? I watched the people on the platform in Zurich. I know, for example, that that man over there is a violinist. <laughs> that would be more impressive if there weren't a violin case next to him. And I believe that the gentleman in the next carriage is a German doctor on his way to Italy to take up a new position. <laughs> and what gives you that idea? There's the rod of Asclepius engraved on his cufflink. And he's carrying a German-Italian dictionary. Maybe he's just taking a holiday in Italy, following in Goethe's footsteps. Too much luggage. And no, he's not retiring to Italy either. The suitcases are too shabby for me to believe that he can afford to retire in his late fifties. All right then, Constable... Zelda. Constable Zelda. If you're such a clever fellow, what am I doing on this train? I think you're looking for someone. You're just guessing. If I were looking for someone, I wouldn't spend the trip cooped up in a freight car, now would I? Well, that would seem to indicate that you're guarding something. And what might it be? I really couldn't say. But it must be very important. Why is that? Because you are very important. They wouldn't have assigned the case to you if it were just a trifle. <laughs> Let's assume that we really are transporting something very important on this train. And let's assume that it really is my job to see that it arrives safely. Then why isn't the train crawling with police? You don't want to arouse attention. If you don't, but why not? It's... it's a trap. <laughs> You've got a vivid imagination. I'll give you that. Well, that is impressive, I admit. But the fewer people involved, the better. We'll get along fine without you. You won't. Won't? Pardonnez-moi. I can help. And I will help. You are in my country, and I have been ordered to assist you. And that's exactly what I'll do, whether you like it or not. Hmm. Clever and strong. Your commitment speaks volumes, Zelna. But this is my show, and I don't need you. Bon voyage. But how do you know? <sighs> oh, hello. You cheated. I did what? I saw you talking to the German doctor on the platform. He told you everything himself, and you were just pretending to put two and two together. And what of it? Do you know who that is? That's Inspector Nicholas Legrand. You have to impress him if you want to work with him. I'm going to tell on you. You'd really tell on me? To the very policeman who shot your dear Raven? Whoa. It was him? Mm-hmm. 
hunted and killed Europe's most famous burglar. That's how he got his start. I won't tell him a thing. I wouldn't either. All right, Matthew. I have to do my work now. Everyone calls me Matt. Well, except for my mom. She calls me Maddie, as if I were a little kid. Whether Legrand wants my help or not, I'll keep my eyes open. Maybe I can change his mind. All right. Vicarage in the Mirror, a detective novel by my favorite author, Lady Clarissa Westmacott. For years now, I've been trying to convince my theater group to stage one of her plays. Each map shows the different routes of the Orient Express. This train began in Paris and ends in Istanbul as usual. Unfortunately, it will make most of its journey without me. The violinist is a good-looking fellow and he's traveling through the most beautiful mountain landscape in the world. One can only hope that his violin is better tuned than he. Hello, sir. Hello. Are you traveling to Istanbul non-stop? No. I'll transfer in Venice to a ship. I'm on my way to Cairo. Cairo? I'm performing at the reception in the Egyptian Museum there. I'm sure your recital will be a great success. But tell me, did you notice anything unusual on the train? Anything unusual? Persons acting suspiciously, for instance. For heaven's sake, is there cause for concern? Everything is in order, sir. We Swiss are just very cautious people. I understand. No. I didn't notice anything. Have a good trip. Thank you. Very kind of you. Thanks. Oh, oh pardon me. No, no, no problem. The uniform is waterproof. Uh, Mr. Lucio. Professor Edgar Lucio. Oh, a professor. Are you a scientist? Do you teach at the Sorbonne? No, I work at the British Museum in London. You don't say. So, you were, shall we say, an eyewitness to the burglary two days ago? No, I wouldn't say that. Oh, no? Well, there was a lot of commotion but I didn't really pay much attention to it. There was a break-in in your museum, and it didn't concern you? Well, let's just say that nothing that's happened in the last 2,000 years concerns me. <laughs> Whatever you say, the famous Inspector Legrand is on this train. I imagine you know him. Uh, no, should I? You don't know him? And you also don't know what he's doing here? No. <laughs> Why should I? Just a thought. You're a representative of the British Museum. There's a guarded safe on the train. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're trying to imply. And now, please excuse me. May I ask where you are going? Of course. To Venice. I'm going to meet some colleagues there. Oh, Venice. A beautiful city, so I'm told. Indeed. 
but I really have to take my leave now. Just one more thing. Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Here? On the train? No, I can't say that I have. Although I did spend most of the time in my compartment. I don't want to take up any more of your valuable time, but you do understand, don't you, that what concerns me is the present, and especially the robbery at the museum. Yeah, of course, of course. It's just, I I'm in rather a hurry. You'll get in touch if you notice anything unusual, won't you, Professor? Of course, Constable. What's this? What's the matter, sir? The door. I can't open it. Ah. We'll sort it out somehow. The compartment is locked. But I didn't lock it. I don't even have a key. I asked the steward. He was going to bring me one, but he never came back. Someone locked it. Find the steward. He needs to bring me the key immediately. Calm down, Professor. I'll see what I can do. You don't understand. I have to get back in my compartment. All right. Just wait here. Thank you. 